Beloved, I welcome you back to the Way of Salvation program. I believe you are getting informed from the messages that you are hearing through those series. Today, I want to handle another important aspect of how demons operate. And let me give you the introduction before I tell you the topic or the heading of what I'm going to talk about. You see, God Almighty wants to have intimate relationship with his creation. That is why he created angelic beings. So God first created angelic beings in heaven for them to have a relationship, personal relationship with him in heaven. So that is to say that angels know God personally. Now, in course of time, some of the angels rebelled through Lucifer. So after the rebellion, they came to be called demons. They have become demons. So what I want us to understand is that even though they have changed position, they still know God very well. You have to understand that. Although they are called demons, they still know God very well. So in my dealings with them, this is how they refer to God. The one who created us. So I've always uh, told people that no one can dispute the fact that there is God Almighty who created everything. Because even demons acknowledge the fact and, the, and, and tremble in his presence that there is someone who created them. I'm talking about God Almighty. So my point here is that the, the angels and the demons both know God very well. That is what you need to understand. Now, after their rebellion, God wanted to fill the vacuum in heaven. So God said to the rest of the angels that we are going to make man in our own image and likeness. So God in his wisdom decided to make man in his own image and likeness. So when you read the book of Genesis that is how the idea of God's intention to create human beings originated. That is how it was originated. God's intention for creating human beings was that he wanted them, number one, to fill the vacuum in heaven and number two, to also have personal relationship with him. That if some of my creation, I'm talking about the demons, if they could not have personal relationship with him forever and have rebelled, then I need to create human beings in my own image and likeness who also have that missing link with me. I'm talking about personal relationship. That is my emphasis. Personal relationship. So God created Adam and Eve. And they knew him personally. So when you read the book of Genesis, after their uh, rebellion by listening to Lucifer and the demons, Genesis chapter 3 and uh, verse 8, the Bible says, they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord 
among the trees of the garden. When I jumped to verse 10, after God asked them, where are you? The answer they gave shows that they had a personal relationship with God. They knew him very intimately. Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden. In verse 8 of Genesis chapter 3, they heard the sound of God walking in the garden. Verse 10, they heard the sound of his voice. It tells you that Adam and Eve could see God walking and could hear God's sound as he spoke. So, they really knew God intimately. Now, after Adam and Eve fell and they began to reproduce on the face of this earth, the subsequent generations did not have that intimate relationship as Adam and Eve had. So the demons capitalized on that and decided to cause human beings to do certain things against them. I want to say this part again. I want you to understand that. What I'm saying is that because demons have realized that subsequent generations don't know God intimately as Adam and Eve did, they have capitalized on that ignorance and are causing humanity to do things against God and to rebel against God just as they also rebelled. So be informed that by my introduction, you can see that Christianity is not a religion with a set of rules that you, that you do to make you a worshiper of God. That in the afternoon do this, in the evening do that, in, uh, and then in the night do this. Uh, wash your body in this way and do that. That is religious uh, uh, ordinances. But we need to understand that Christianity is knowing God personally. And, and that knowledge of God personally will affect you also in your life for you to walk daily in his nature. That is what I want us to understand. Christianity is knowing God intimately and personally. And that knowledge of him will affect your daily life. So I always put it simply this way. Christianity is a way of life. What way of life is that? I am living according to the nature of God in me. Someone's life has reflected on my life. Someone's life has had impact on me to the point that I live according to his nature as he created me. You see, that is how we should understand how Christianity is about. It's knowing God personally. Now, coming back to my point, demons know that future generations have not come to know God personally. In fact, uh, there are few people in the Bible who knew God personally. As a result of that, demons are pushing people to do things against God. So, what I'm going to talk about today is that because we don't know God, demons push us to do things against him. In other words, it's what we do against God because we don't know him. I hope you understand what I mean. You see? So, that is what I want us to understand. They have seen that we don't know God personally. So if you don't know someone personally, how can he impact your life for you to live daily or walk daily in that impact? How? You will not do that. You see? You don't know him. So you cannot be impacted by that life 
for you to live in that way of life every day. That is what is happening. So there are things you will never do if you really know God intimately. That is what I'm going to talk about. Demons are pushing us to do certain things. And what I mean is that you will never do those things if you really know God, the creator. You will never do that. Adam and Eve knew him very well. They heard the sound of his voice. They could hear him walking. But still, they sinned against him. So you can see that if even Adam and Eve who knew God intimately sinned against God. Then what about the, 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 the what about today's generation who don't know him at all? You can imagine. If even those who know God can sin against him. Then what about those who don't know him? So take your time as we go through the Bible for us to study certain things that will cause us to know him. And you see, in this era of the coronavirus, I, 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 God is so wise. He's so wise. And this is the way I, I put it. God is the word wisdom. Wisdom, the word wisdom is equal to God. And God is equal to wisdom. He is the word wisdom. In this hundred years, the last hundred years, God has really tested humanity and we have failed the big time. The last hundred years, we have never seen what is happening in this world before. This I'm talking about this pandemic. So the coronavirus is a test from God, as I told you in the other episodes. And the way things are going, you can see that people don't know God at all. I'm going to dwell again on what is happening for you to see that we don't know God at all. The first point is that the politicians are saying that people can go to church but when you go you have to adhere to the same measures I as the president have given to other social gatherings. Say it. I've directed that at every social gathering People should wear nose mask. Wear nose mask. Space yourselves. They talk about social distance. And also wash your hands with soap. So the same directive affects the church. What do they mean? If you go to church, even if it's called church, we don't mind. Cover your nose. And then space yourselves. Because we, we as politicians... We don't see that God is able to prevent any virus in his presence. So when I just speak what the politicians say and direct, it means that they don't know who God is at all. For them to say that people should wear nose marks in God's presence, it means they don't know who God is at all. Let me refresh in their memories. And if they don't know, let me, let me tell them now. God that I am preaching about is the one who created everything you see. He spoke and everything came into existence. According to the book of Genesis. He spoke. Verse one, Genesis chapters 1 and 2. You can see how God created this world. He spoke and everything came into being. Including what you call a virus. Anything in existence you see came because of God's words. He spoke and everything came into being. So, if you are a politician and you say that even if they go into his presence, they should obey your directive, hey, it is very serious. It means you don't know God at all. It also means you don't know his potency. In other words, you don't know what God can do. You don't know the power of God. You don't know at all. So that is why I say demons are pushing people to do that. So before I continue, I want us to understand that all the politicians 
who may even mention God in their mouths, but have directed that people should wear nose masks and space themselves in the church, don't know the God they mention his name in their mouths. They don't know him at all. What they are telling God is that they cannot prevent any virus from spreading from person to person. So if I give a directive, if even you call it church, obey, obey my orders. Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, be very careful because you may be colliding with God. And my God who created everything, including yourself, can remove you from power. Because according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 to 22, my God has power. He raises kings and removes kings. So be very careful because of the power you have. Be very careful that you will not give any directive that will belittle God. It means the politicians don't know God. Now, why are the politicians giving such directives? They are listening to the advice of the, of the medical doctors. It is the medical doctors who are telling the, the presidents that if people don't adhere to our directives, they may go on strike. That is what they are afraid. That is what they are afraid of. So I want us to understand that if you are a medical doctor, you are also acting this, in the same way as the presidents and the prime ministers of this world. Mr. Doctor, Mrs. Doctor, what you are saying is that they have to adhere to the measures else God cannot do anything in the church. Mr. Doctor, you are very funny. If you have forgotten, I'm saying it again. If I create my world and you go and sit in a classroom to study how I did my things, you and I, who knows the things, the, the world very, very well? You and I. Who knows this world very well? Answer it for yourself. So you see, it is human knowledge that is causing them to be proud like that. Mr. Doctor, Mrs. Doctor, demons are pushing you to do things because you don't know God. And surprisingly, the third group that I'm going to talk about has to do with so-called preachers. So-called preachers. These are the people who are holding Bible and are preaching every day with sweat, talking about God can do this, God can do that, God can do this. This is what surprises me. If God can do this, God can do that. Some of them were even boasting of large crusades with miracles. Now, if a president together with a medical doctor or medical doctors have issued measures that people should wear nose masks in the church and space ourselves in the church and you as the preacher you also agree it means you also don't know God at all that is very sad your, your, your case is worse than the first two groups because you are the one talking about God you are the one saying he can do this. You are the one saying from preaching from his Bible that he could do that, he could do this, he can do this, he can do that. So why, why do you say you have agreed to the, the measures of people who are outside the church who don't know what is happening inside? Why have you agreed? It means that the preachers also don't know God. So in this era of the coronavirus, what I want to tell you today is that because we don't know God. Demons have pushed people to find it difficult to believe it. That is my point. So what I've, what I've just talked about in this episode is clear. Because we don't know God, demons have pushed people to find it difficult to believe it. So I've said, as I said, Presidents are finding it difficult. They are finding it difficult to believe in God. That he can prevent the virus from spreading in his presence. 
The medical doctors are also saying God cannot do it. They are finding it difficult. That is why they say the measures should affect the church also. And the surprise of all are those who are preaching about God. They have also accepted the measures. Meaning they are also struggling to accept that God can prevent the virus in his presence. So you see, demons are very clever. They have seen that people don't know God. So they are pushing us to find it difficult to believe in God. That is, my, that is the first point. So I am here to encourage you that you have to understand that all that you see was created by God. Everything you see came into being because of what God spoke, because of his voice. So I'm here to tell you that as for I and my children action power, we believe that. That is why I always say and tell you that with God, all things are possible. I will continue this time. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Tatsu Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.